I get a bunch of questions about the different things you can do with a biomedical engineering degree. So I thought, you know, let's just make a video and talk about this. But before you guys just bombard the comment section, let's address the top two questions first. The first one is, do you really need to have maths in your 11th and 12th to do a biomedical engineering degree? Now, it's not necessary. You can still do a biomedical degree without maths because typically in your undergrad, the first year you will study pre-calculus, calculus and other basic maths that you'll need throughout your degree but if you do have maths in your 11th and 12th it always helps because it makes your first year of undergrad a little easier now the second question i get is if i've done something like electrical engineering computer science engineering electronics or biotech can i still do biomedical engineering as a postgrad as a masters of course you can the point is that even if you decide to change career paths a little for a post graduation degree you should be able to connect your previous degree let's say electrical degree and show how you would use those four years that you learned in your undergrad towards a biomedical engineering degree and the best place to do that as we all know because everybody watches my videos is through your essay so the first one on our list is academia. Now, although this field has a ton of research involved, you as a biomedical engineer wouldn't be working directly with patients per se, but there is still a high level of clinical significance here. Now you can choose to do either a master's degree, um, a PhD, or even become a, a postdoc ultimately. Now the whole point of all this is you would spend a significant amount of time doing some substantial research in a field that's very closely related to biology. I'm not gonna go super into details about what the specialization can be, but it can vary all the way from genetics to microbiology to lab on chip technology. But the whole point here is that this doesn't happen in a day. You can't expect to go into the lab one day, discover something, and then you're writing papers left and right the next year. The whole research process itself is a long commitment. It takes years to kind of just kind of move your whole project forward. So you have to be ready to dedicate that amount of time and effort and a large portion of your life into doing that. So let's take me for example. It literally took me three years of my undergrad journey to figure out what I really wanted to do. I spent a ton of time in various labs and other departments trying to figure things, stuff out. And ultimately, after three years, I found out that my passion and my interest lied in lab on chip technology and microfluidics. Now, you guys wouldn't believe it, but in the first two years, I actually thought I was you know, really into mechanical engineering and electronics engineering so much so that I actually spent a large chunk of my time developing a device that suppresses hand tremors. And it was completely based on these two concepts of viscous and mechanical damping. It was basically like a cast device, which had like two syringes um, connected with tubing. And because there was liquid in those syringes, you could control the pressure at which they kind of like went back and forth. I was super into it, did a whole prototype and all this stuff in my like second year of undergrad but slowly slowly i realized that that isn't something that i really wanted to you know learn more about and get into and it didn't really make me as curious as i'd like to be and then uh, ultimately after three years i got into the research um, area of lab on chip technology i basically did the same thing it was very similar to like the device that i made in my first year for second year essentially but it was on a much smaller scale which is where microfluidics comes in and of course uh, for those of you guys who don't know what microfluidics is it's basically um flowing making liquid flow um on a small chip to you know make a lot of like biological processes happen and basically using this microfluidic technology you can make complex molecular platforms which can do a lot of the things that uh, you know humans do in the lab for example with this microfluidic technology you can do things like pcr amplification stem cell encapsulation drug delivery as well as disease diagnostics so from this what i mean to say is learn from my experience thoda ghar se bahar niklo apne teachers and professors se baat karo try to see where you can kind of get involved in these group projects and the big big takeaway is that don't do it just for the sake of winning a prize or getting that certificate. Those things are not what's going to make your profile valuable. What's going to make it valuable is the fact that you learn a skill and then you apply it to a real life application. 
The second career path on our list is becoming a doctor. Now, as surprising as this may sound, biomedical science or biomedical engineering is one of the most valuable pre-med degrees. Now, if you guys haven't watched my other uh, medical school videos yet, you need a pre-med degree to actually do your medicine and become a doctor in the US if you're starting after high school. And this pre-med degree typically is something like biology, social science, physics, chemistry. But Taking biomedical in general as a pre-med degree can open a lot of doors. Not only do you get to fulfill those prerequisites that you need for med school, but it also opens a ton of other career paths. And as we all know, research is a big part of medicine. But I know that a ton of you guys are from India and you've done your MBBS already. So for those students who've completed their MBBS in India, the pathway to becoming a doctor in the US has something to do with the USMLE exam. Now this is a three-step exam and USMLE step one is a very comprehensive exam, a, a pretty difficult test, almost like you're neat. So obviously it's safe to say that you're gonna have to study for this exam. So this is where I'd like to introduce you guys to Unacademy because they've launched their USMLE step one prep course, which is a two and a half month course with over 300 lectures, all at a very affordable price. In addition to the lectures, they also provide over 800 hours of videos so that you can be crystal clear on the information that you're trying to learn and not only that, you have a ton of mock tests, question banks, answer keys. So basically with this whole prep course, you have everything you need to prep for your USMLE step one journey. I'm gonna leave a link to the course in the description below and you can sign up and get 10% off using the code in the description. Now the third career path on our list is the most awaited industry and this is where I'm at right now. Now with everything that went on in 2020 and 2021, biomedical engineering jobs have gained a lot of popularity. Now depending on which industry you're interested in, you can go into medical devices, you can go into R&D, you can go into regulatory. So the way this panned out for me was that um, when I got involved with academia-based research in microfluidics and lab-on-chip technology towards the end of my undergrad, I spent a good year you know, learning all of these hands-on skills and applying everything that I had learned in my undergrad towards this research. But towards the end, I realized that this wasn't something that I interested and saw myself doing long-term. And I wanted to shift paths, which is why I applied to Cornell for my master's in an industry and fast-paced environment. And that's where I got to work on some cutting edge projects with you know, companies like Johnson & Johnson. But one of the projects that I worked on during my master's was an optical sensor that would detect deformations in uh, tissue types. But this was something that we worked on as a group and we would have you know, stakeholder meetings on a bi-weekly basis to kind of learn how the industry in general for healthcare works. And through this, I realized that, you know, this is something that I enjoy doing. And that's how I kind of, you know, moved forward after graduation in the similar career path of medical devices in the healthcare industry. Even now in the job that I'm in, I've learned coding just so I can apply that skill set to the healthcare industry. I've learned a ton of regulatory things that go directly in involvement with the FDA regulations in the US. And you know, this just never stops. That's my whole point. Um, I even was involved with the Clinton Foundation uh, to work on a research uh, back in 2018. I got to meet the whole Clinton family and uh, you know, it was a very epic experience. But overall, I guess like the whole point here is throughout my journey as a biomedical engineer through studying and even right now, I never had this one goal that, you know, from the start that I know that I want to do this. It always kept changing. And, and that's what I want you guys to take away from this video. It's okay not to know, but the whole point is you have to keep trying new things. And until you put yourself in that place and experience whether this academia industry or a medical degree is fit for you or not, you're never gonna know. Like people, or even myself, we can tell you as much as you wanna hear. But unless you experience this for yourself, um, you can never kind of like cross it off your list. That's about it for this video. Smash that like button if you reached till this point. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.